So we all know why we're here. And I would just like to comment, uh, maybe to take us a little bit deeper in our reflection about the beginning of Lent. I want to center my thoughts on what we're going to do for Lent as penances, what we're going to do, and why we're going to do them. Okay. If you're like I am, human nature, usually when we come to this season of Lent, we think back over the last Lents of our lives, and most of the time, we pick the same penances that we did last Lent. Some of them might even go back to the penances they did as children. But think about it. If the penances that we do for Lent are supposed to bring us closer to Christ, because that's the ultimate reason, why do we stop doing them when Easter comes? Whatever penances we pick to make us better Christians, better disciples of Jesus, whatever they are, we should really continue to do them for the rest of our lives. It's, this is not an endurance contest between now and Easter Sunday. A wise person once said, only a fool will believe that by doing the same things over and over again that we're going to get different results. So the penances that we choose, what we're going to do, should reflect who we are in our lives today and what needs to be changed so we will become more Christ-like. If you want to know what penances you should be doing, ask your spouse. They'll tell you what needs to be changed. One lady this morning said after Mass, I don't even have to ask my spouse. I know what he wants me to do. But that's what we should be doing. And always choose penances in the areas of our lives that need reform and improvement. If, if you're troubled by excessive anger or negative thinking or whatever, don't give up candy. It doesn't make any sense. Choose a penance that reflects the area in which we know we need to improve to become more Christ-like. And pick penances in the area of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And as I already said, it's not an endurance contest. It's an attempt for us to be more faithful followers of Christ. Now that's what we're going to do. Now why do we do it? I already mentioned it's to become more faithful followers of Christ. But we, we do it for Christ, for Jesus, not for ourselves. Because so often when we, do, when we choose a penance for Lent, and we're successful at it, well, by the, by the time we get to Easter, we think, you know, what a good boy am I that I was able to hang on and do all this for all of the time of Lent. It's not for ourselves. And it doesn't begin with us. Because we're human, and we always think that everything begins with me. And as followers of Christ, we start to realize that everything begins with him. When I was a young priest... I met an older priest who said, I offered Mass every day of my life since I was ordained. He, he, the pride, the buttons of pride were bursting off his chest. You know what I did? The next day I skipped Mass. So I never again could say what I did because it all depends on what God does. So tonight, during the service, open your hearts to the Lord. Ask the Lord to show you what areas in which we all need to do penance. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And again, it's not just until Easter. It's for the rest of our lives. Now, if we can do that, if we can really accept penances that change our lives to be more Christ-like, then Easter will happen. Just like Christmas, Easter is not an event that happened to Jesus just 2,000 years ago. If we can become, become more like his presence in the world today, then this year, Easter will happen. Christ will rise and be more evident, not just through him, 
but through us. And that's what it means to be a disciple. Christ dying and rising in the world through us.